Well, in case you didn't know, the Corvettes had a very, very unusual feature, or should I say unusual engineering design until 2019. They had leaf springs, leaf springs in 2019. But why? Let's answer that question. Roll the intro. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Happy, I want to say Tuesday. It is almost Christmas. I feel like this year just started last week. Oh my God. Like the older you get, time just like, whew. it's kind of scary, man. Holy cow, I'm drinking a little silver bullet tonight. Today was supposed to be installing new seats. They were supposed to be here on Saturday. Today's Tuesday. Now they're supposed to be here Friday. So hopefully the next video will be putting new seats in the C5Z. In case you don't know, I've had the Amazon specials for five and a half years. I'm officially retiring those guys. Had a good run with them, nothing wrong with them. Just getting a little worn out, you know. But I think I was one of the very first people to do video on those damn things back in 2020, man. Yeah, it was crazy. I rolled the dice. I know they'd fit, and they fit, and a lot of people have done it since. Well, in any case, since I'm still waiting on parts for the car, I thought today would be a fun day to address a very, very strange uh, engineering choice for the Corvette for almost 69 years. Uh, and like I said, the leaf springs. In case you don't know what a leaf spring is and why it's so uncommon on a, a modern car, especially after 2019, uh, leaf springs were introduced, you could say as early as like 900, but we'll say for our purposes in this video, 1700s. Um, if you had a fancy uh, horse carriage, you got leaf springs. It's one of the very first suspensions for, I say automotive, uh, but for, I guess, vehicles for moving people. Uh, very crude, but it worked for a few hundred years, obviously. But long story short, it typically made of steel. We'll get into that here in a second. It does change over time. Uh, but it's just stacked pieces of steel neatly. Uh, each one's a little smaller on top, and it works like a spring, if you will. And they're curved, and they absorb the weight of the car. And, you know, 50, 100, 200, 300 years ago, this was perfect. It's all they needed. And these were ideal for trucks, especially vans with a lot of cargo. Uh, like I said, very simple design, strong and very space efficient. That's key as to why the Corvette kept these damn things for so long. And like I said, they, they function by, by flexing under stress. And the, the friction in between the leaves uh, provides a natural type of dampening. And in the 60s and 70s, it was not uncommon for a lot of cars, even muscle cars, to have leaf springs especially in the rear, but not transversely mounted, uh, forward and aft. You'd see that quite often, especially among uh, uh, Chevy and Ford. But by the 80s, man, it was rare to find a leaf spring on, uh, on passenger cars. Now, in trucks and vans, they still use them. Until today, there are a few in the margins, pickups and vans that still do utilize the leaf springs, but not very many. So Corvette, and it's, geez, what, 70, 70 how many years? It's three year run? Uh, close to 70 of that since 1953 has used leaf springs in some regard. Now, 53 when they came out, uh, in the rear they had leaf springs, but not mounted transversely, but forward and aft, um, all the way through the C2 and up until, um, but no correction there, in C2 they still used leaf springs only in the back, but now they're transverse, meaning they went from uh, wheel to wheel instead of forward to back. And they used the stacked steel design until 1978, where they got rid of those for weight reduction and simplicity for now a fiberglass composite plastic situation. C1 to the C3 to the end of the C3, they all use leaf springs in the rear only, and they still had uh, coils up front. Now by the C4, they completely jettisoned all springs. Now it's all, well, coil springs, if you will, and by the C8, it was all exclusively uh, leaf springs front and rear transversely mounted and still crazy uh, how rare that is all in a 2019 a leaf spring in a performance car quick fun fact before we go any further uh, when i bought my very first corvette i was an e2 in the navy this was 20 years ago uh, i got my my enlistment bonus i was on submarine so they were like hey you have some money i was like cool and i thought this was a great financial decision because i always wanted a corvette uh, I ended up buying a, a C4 1995 
105, I think, thousand miles on it, yellow. I think I paid like $9,000 for it. I knew about cars, but I wasn't really invested in Corvettes yet. I didn't know it had leaf springs for like a week. Uh, Petty Officer Kovacs, that was his name, my, my first ship for boat. And uh, he was like, dude, you have Corvette? I was like, yeah. It's like, it's crazy to have leaf springs. And I'm like, I, like, what are you talking about? I almost kind of fight with them. And like, dude, I'm telling you, they have leaf springs. And I, sure enough, I go out there, open the clamshell. And I've seen it a few times. I just assumed uh, the shock was a coilover, but it wasn't. So I was like, holy shit, it is a actual uh, transverse leaf spring. And I was like, that is a very strange um, engineering design. And this is right when the C6 came out. I did my research. I'm like, oh, the C5 has them, and the C6 has a leaf spring. I was blown away by this. And it made me very curious. I was like, why does, why does Chevy do this? Very, very weird. But it works, obviously, right? Anyways, let's get, let's get to the why. Why did Corvette team use these until just six years ago? Uh, firstly, better packaging and design. In case you don't know, if an entire coilover with a spring, you need a lot more room up in your wheel wells. Uh, Corvettes are a very low slung car, if you will, and they designed the push rod motor to be very, very low in the car. Um, by providing a uh, transverse leaf spring, you can have the shocks mounted relatively high inside the wheel well and use the, uh, the very simple design of a leaf spring uh, to tuck your wheels super high. And it was very clever and it worked just fine. And looking at the C5 now, it makes it a very, very low car and it's very clever the way they did it. Secondly, simplicity and weight. I have coilovers on my car now, but I believe um, the weight difference was almost a wash. I believe I weighed all the components of the coil versus the leaf spring. I think the leaf spring was still a little bit lighter. Again, like, this is installing R&D coilovers way after the fact, 20 years later, that would be much lighter than would have been years ago. And lastly, cost and manufacturing. This one makes the most sense because it, wor it worked in a performance environment, obviously. Um, super simple design, very cost effective, and it was able to keep the cost down versus other rivals at the time, uh, Viper, Porsches, etc. The, the Corvette was always a little bit cheaper because they were able to, I don't want to say cut corners, but get creative. So yeah, they can mass produce these cars uh, with exotic territory, but keep them relatively inexpensive, and that's very true. However, uh, leaf springs are not all peaches and cream. There are some disadvantages uh, to having leaf springs, especially on Corvette. Uh, reduced independence, meaning crosstalk. Whatever one, one side of the wheel is doing, you're putting stress across that member to the other wheel. So like I said, they're not independent, the wheels of each other. Whatever one's doing at high stress, the other one's doing a low stress situation. So it's not properly balanced. Uh, secondly, harshness, especially if you lower them on the stock bolts. The more you lower them, the more stress is on that leaf spring and it rides like doo-doo. Ask me how I know. But yeah, the lower you get these things, man, on the stock leaf springs, compared to coilovers, oof, it's rough. It looks good, don't get me wrong, but it's a, it's a chore to drive. And lastly, uh, tuning these for a track day, it's really hard to tune a leaf spring versus a coilover. Coilovers, each wheel independently, depending on the type of track, you can tune it in, uh, the compression and dampening, right? But on a leaf spring, you're stuck. No real tunability. It is what it is. Yes, like I stated earlier, I do have a C5 Z06. Yes, I ditched my leaf springs about two or three years ago. My biggest reason why was because they were old and tired, and it, I just the car was 21 years old at the time. Um, I didn't like the crosstalk. I wanted independent suspension, independent suspension for each wheel, which that provided to me. And like I stated earlier, I wanted to be able to adjust the ride height. Slam on leaf springs, the ride's terrible. Slam on coilovers, no matter where you are, it stays pretty much the same. Ride quality, that is. And I had my BC coilovers, three, three and a half years, no issues. And I feel like the more I drive it, the more they get broken in. And they're very soft now, but not too soft. Um, and you can always adjust them. I have my front ones to the almost softest position and my rear ones right in the middle. To me, that's perfect. And lastly, why did the, the Corvette, the C8, finally ditch the tried and true leaf spring? Long story short, mid-engine packaging. Completely redesigned the Corvette, pretty much uh, copied a, a, a Ferrari 458 as far as the chassis, very close to it. Um, with the mid-engine design, they were very clever and they left a lot of room to add coils both front and back. And they were able to hide uh, all that distance you need like in the previous models. So by going 
uh, mid-engine, if you will. It gave them the, the leeway or the, the freedom to get creative and add proper coilovers. Um, if you've ever driven a C4 to C7 versus a C8, it's kind of crazy how well a C8 drives. My The C5 in stock form is a little harsh. The C6 is better. The C7 drives very well for leaf springs. They've gotten it, they tuned it really well on the C7. And also has to do with the body rigidity. That's a whole other video for another time. But with the C8, man, I had a um, non Z51 C8. And uh, that thing, even with the Paragon springs I put on it, um, it rode very well. The time my wife had a Cadillac SUV and they were almost similar the way they, they drove. So the coilovers on the C8 are, are absolutely uh, phenomenal. Uh, and I, with dampening, you know, with the, the magnetic ride, it's even better. But, um, but yeah, there you go. Quick little history on the leaf spring on the, on the Corvettes. And yes, up until 2019, the Corvette in some capacity always used a leaf spring. Pretty nuts, huh? So cool. All right, quick little video, guys. Like I said, I was hoping to do a fun little DIY tonight, but like I said, the seats will be here this weekend. So next video will be the seats. Have I told you guys the seats I got yet? I don't think so. It'll be a surprise. But they're their actual name brand now. They're not the something cheap off of Amazon. I've had the car long enough, done enough stuff. I think it's it's proper for the car to get something a little more stout. And then um, new exhaust, paint correction. Pause on this guy. Second Corvette. Cool. All right, guys. Go enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you guys next time. Mark out.